Can cleaning rivers really stop the flood of plastic pouring into our oceans? Some experts say targeting rivers is the key to ending ocean plastic pollution at its source. In this video, we'll explore the science, solutions, and real results of river cleanup projects. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe for more eye-opening content, and stay tuned as we uncover what really works. One, rivers are the main pathway to ocean plastic. Over 80% of ocean plastic starts on land and reaches the sea through river systems. Rivers collect waste from cities, towns, farms, and illegal dumping zones all over the world. Once inside a river, plastic flows rapidly toward the ocean, often in just a few short days. Stopping plastic at the river level is the most direct way to block it from entering the sea. Unlike ocean currents, river routes are more predictable and easier to monitor and manage. River plastic enters the marine environment daily, affecting coastlines and marine species. Any attempt to solve ocean pollution must begin with river-focused strategies and tools. Two, river cleanups are easier than ocean retrieval. The ocean is vast, deep, and constantly moving, making plastic cleanup difficult and costly. Once plastic reaches the open sea, it can drift for years or sink beyond recovery depth. In contrast, rivers are narrower, shallower, and far more accessible to cleanup equipment. Trash booms, skimmer boats, and manual nets are easier to deploy in rivers than oceans. Riverbanks can be equipped with permanent or mobile systems to catch floating waste early. Storm drains and outfalls that flow into rivers can also be modified with plastic barriers. Early interception in rivers is cheaper and faster than long-term open sea plastic removal. Three, river plastic ends up in the food chain. Plastic carried by rivers is not just trash, it becomes part of our environment and food supply. Once in the ocean, plastic breaks down into microplastics that enter marine food chains. Fish, birds, and marine mammals ingest this plastic, mistaking it for plankton or prey. These toxins bioaccumulate, meaning each layer of the food chain receives more plastic. When humans eat seafood, they are indirectly consuming this plastic and its contaminants. River plastic contributes directly to this invisible form of pollution and health risk. Removing plastic before it reaches the sea protects fish, coral reefs, and coastal resources. Four, top rivers contribute the most waste. A small number of rivers are responsible for the majority of plastic entering the oceans. Studies show that as few as 10 rivers carry over 90% of all riverborne plastic waste. These rivers flow through densely populated countries with poor waste management systems. Examples include the Yangtze, Ganges, Nile, and Mekong, which run through major cities. By focusing cleanup and waste interception in these key rivers, results can be exponential. Targeting a handful of hotspots delivers global benefits far beyond the local cleanup zones. Plastic collected in these rivers prevents pollution across multiple countries and oceans. Five, plastic booms are proven to work. Floating barriers, called booms, are one of the most effective river cleanup technologies today. These systems float on the water's surface and guide trash toward collection zones or bins. Boats or cranes then remove the accumulated plastic for sorting, recycling, or disposal. Some booms are stationary, while others are mobile and can be placed based on rainfall. Booms are low cost, require minimal maintenance, and can be built using local materials. When installed near high waste zones or storm drains, they catch plastic early and efficiently. Cities like Jakarta, Manila, and Rotterdam have seen measurable success with boom systems. Six, river cleanup builds local responsibility. River cleanup programs empower local communities to participate in environmental change. Involving local people in monitoring, collecting, and sorting waste creates lasting impact. Residents begin to see rivers as resources worth protecting instead of places to dump trash. Schools and youth programs can join efforts, creating education opportunities through action. Communities that clean rivers often improve waste habits and reduce littering behavior. River cleanup becomes a visible sign of environmental care, pride, and civic engagement. When citizens are part of the cleanup, they become champions for pollution prevention. Seven, clean rivers reduce disaster risk. Plastic-filled rivers do not just pollute, they increase flooding, health crises, and property loss. Blocked drainage causes rivers to overflow, flood streets, and damage homes during rainfall. 
Stagnant, plastic-clogged rivers become breeding grounds for mosquitoes and waterborne disease. Cleanup of these rivers improves both health safety and disaster preparedness in cities. Urban river cleanup is essential for climate resilience and emergency flood planning. Clean rivers flow properly, protect infrastructure, and keep vulnerable neighborhoods safer. River booms also double as flood indicators, showing buildup before damage occurs downstream. Less plastic in rivers means fewer blocked pipes, clogged culverts, and broken sewage lines. 8. Interception prevents long-term harm. Plastic that reaches oceans can last hundreds of years and travel across entire continents. Removing it at the river stage prevents this permanent form of global environmental damage. Interception strategies are more than cleanup. They are long-term environmental protection. Stopping waste early reduces microplastic breakdown and long-range pollution distribution. Collected river waste can still be sorted, recycled, or used for energy recovery methods. In the ocean, plastic is too degraded and dispersed to make collection or reuse practical. Early collection avoids marine animal harm, reef destruction, and ocean food chain poisoning. Plastic that is stopped in rivers is still manageable. It has not yet become marine fallout. 9. Global policies must prioritize rivers. International treaties often focus on marine zones without addressing upstream river sources. Plastic bans, recycling goals, and waste audits must include river systems and flow mapping. Tracking river plastic helps governments pinpoint high leakage areas needing urgent support. Funding agencies must direct more money toward river-based interventions and boom projects. Plastic import-export rules should account for transboundary river plastic pathways. Countries sharing rivers must collaborate on upstream-downstream pollution responsibility. Laws must enforce plastic interception before it can flow beyond national borders downstream. Rivers should be classified as shared environmental zones with international obligations. 10. Yes, river cleanups can stop ocean plastic. When done strategically, river cleanups can dramatically reduce plastic entering the oceans. Rivers are not just contributors. They are key control points in the plastic waste journey. Stopping pollution before it flows to sea is far more effective than cleaning it afterward. With the right tools, awareness, and commitment, rivers can become protective barriers. Intervention at this level creates results fast and saves oceans from long-term pollution damage. Every bottle caught, every bag collected, is a future marine death prevented in advance. River cleanup is not a small solution. It is the core strategy for ocean plastic prevention. River cleanups may be one of our last chances to stop plastic before it reaches the ocean. But are we doing enough? Now that you've seen what's possible, the next step is action. Don't forget to like this video if you believe change starts upstream, subscribe for more environmental insights, and share it to spread awareness because clean rivers mean cleaner oceans.